Sauce here. This is a video lesson on the chain rule, a very important and useful property to help us with composite functions. I'm going to define y as the sine of 3x squared. This function is a composite function. We're putting 3x squared into the sine function. The structure of a function like this is f composed with g. If we mean that the f function is the outside function sine of x, and g is what we're putting into sine of x. How do we take the derivative of a function like this? The derivative of a composite function In this case, d or dx of f composed with g is equal to the derivative of the outside function composed with the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. This is what we call the chain rule. And I'll explain in a moment with another example of why we call it the chain rule. So if we have a composite function, we're going to need to know the pieces f and g and their derivatives. In this case, the derivative of sine or f is cosine. And the derivative of the g function, in this case, is 6x. So the derivative of the y function following this pattern is going to be the derivative of the outside function composed with the inside function times, and then when we, when we multiply in this case, every time we multiply by another piece in this pattern, we call it a chain, times the derivative of the inside function. Let's give another example. I'm going to define the z function to be cosine squared of 7x cubed. The structure of this function is it's a composite function, but it's a composite of th three functions. We have an outside function composed with something that is itself a composite function. f composed with g, which is composed of h of x. The derivative of this function, if we are referring to it as the f function, because f is the outside function with respects to x, with this notation is going to be equal to the derivative of the outside function with respects to what it's composed with times the derivative of what f is composed with with respects to what it itself is composed with. In this case, g is composed with h times the derivative of what g is composed with, with respects to what composes h, in this case, x. And we could, though it's unnecessary, to continue this pattern and consider if x is composing h, then we will also multiply by the derivative of what composes h with respects to x, x being the final input, the independent variable in the original function. But the reason why we don't often follow this pattern until this last step is because this last step is always something over itself and 1. And multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of something, so it's often le left out. But what we have with this notation here is the ability to see that in the denominator and the numerator, we always have a common factor as if this notation is the product of a bunch of uh, fractions. 
and the fractions or their product will always have a combination of numerator and denominator that can cancel out, leaving the notation for the original derivative, in this case df over dx. But spreading it out allows us to think of this composite function in pieces and then assemble the pieces when we create the derivative. We get the idea of the chain rule as thinking of these as links in a chain that will cancel out. So the derivative of z is going to be composed with f, g, and h. We have defined the f function, the outer function, to be the squaring function because it's cosine that's going to be squared. So we're composing the squaring function with cosine of 7x cubed. What composes the squaring function we've called g, and that is cosine of x. And finally, what is composing cosine of x, which we've called g, is the function 7x cubed. We need to take the derivatives of each of these. The derivative of f is 2x. The derivative of g is negative sine x and the derivative of h is 21x squared. Now that we have the pieces, we're ready to compose the derivative following the chain rule. The derivative of z with respect to x is the derivative of the outside function composed with g which is composed itself with h times, and this is when we're going to do our first chain, the derivative of g, which is a negative sine composed with h, and this is times negative sine. And then finally, we're going to chain our last, which is the derivative of what is composing g, which is 21x squared. We could simplify. If this was part of a larger problem and we would continue, we might want to do that. But if we're simply asked to find the derivative of this composite function, once we've done so, it's wise to stop.